Hello guys, welcome to the movie recap review. Happy watching. By reason of insanity, it makes no sense in this <laughs> The film opens with a whimsical Looney Tunes style cartoon titled Me and My Shadow. In this animated feature, Arthur Fleck revels in his newfound fame as the Joker. Just before a live performance, he retreats to his dressing room, where his shadow sudden, suddenly springs to life, attempting to seize control of his identity. The shadow takes the stage and performs in Arthur's place, only to merge back with him moments later. As the performance concludes, police officers burst in and brutally assault Arthur. Having spent the last two years in Arkham Asylum following the murders of Murray Franklin, three subway passengers, and his former co-worker Randall, Arthur endures relentless abuse from the guards, particularly from a sadistic officer named Jackie Sullivan. During a visit from his lawyer, Marianne Stewart, and his social worker, Deborah Kane, they express their belief that Arthur suffers from a split personality disorder, suggesting that it is the Joker persona responsible for the heinous acts. Arthur's crimes have also inspired a TV movie, garnering him a handful of followers and admirers, including fellow inmate Harleen Lee Quinzel. During a music therapy session, Arthur finds himself drawn to Lee, and the attraction seems mutual. When he approaches her, Lee nonchalantly reveals that she's in Arkham for setting fire to her parents' apartment building. Sharing Arthur's morbid sense of humor, she expresses her fascination with him especially after witnessing his infamous murder of Murray on live television. Feeling an intense connection, Arthur returns to the group of inmates, at who are watching a news report. District Attorney Harvey Dent is determined to prosecute Arthur for his string of murders and is pushing for the death penalty. When asked how he feels about this, Arthur retreats into a vivid daydream, imagining himself serenading Lee with, for once in my life, spurred by his growing attraction to her. Later, the inmates gather to watch. That's entertainment. In the middle of the screening, Lee sets yet another fire, which quickly spreads, causing chaos as the room erupts in panic. Amid the turmoil, Lee calmly approaches Arthur, kisses him, and begins singing the film's titular song. Together, they run through Arkham, attempting a daring escape. They nearly succeed, reaching the gates, only to be pulled back by guards at the last moment. Arthur is thrown into solitary confinement where he laughs uncontrollably, envisioning a dreamlike scene of himself and Lee dancing on a rooftop under the moonlight. Arthur wakes up in his cell to find Lee sitting beside him. She tells him that she's being released due to their relationship, promising that she will attend his trial every day and wait for him until he gets out. In a tender moment, Lee applies Arthur's signature Joker makeup on him, and they share a passionate encounter for the first time. The next day, Marianne accompanies Arthur for a televised interview with Patty Myers. Patty hopes this platform will give him a chance to let his Joker persona emerge, but Marianne insists that he be addressed by his own name. During the interview, Patty presses Arthur with questions about the murders, but Arthur insists they should focus on how he has changed since those events. Patty also brings up the news report detailing Arthur and Lee's romantic escape attempt. In a moment of defiance, Arthur begins singing, Bewitched, captivating everyone at Arkham as they watch on. Meanwhile, outside, Lee stands in a crowd gathered around a TV store, intently watching the broadcast. In a fit of determination, she smashes the glass and steals a small TV. Arthur's trial quickly begins, attracting hundreds of fans, including Lee, who stands outside the courthouse. Dr. Victor Liu testifies, asserting that Arthur is faking his mental illness and committed the murders on his own, though he acknowledges that Arthur is a deeply troubled individual with a traumatic background. Marianne presents her argument in defense of Arthur. At the end of the day, Lee confronts Marianne, insisting that they are doing everything possible to keep her away from Arthur. Later, Marianne visits Arthur in his cell and reveals that everything Lee has told him about her past, being poor, her father's death, and so on, is a lie. In reality, Lee lives in the Upper West Side with both her parents and holds a degree in psychology. Marianne warns Arthur that Lee is manipulating him, but instead of heeding her advice, he gets lost in a musical fantasy featuring himself and Lee, 
which culminates in a shocking moment where she shoots the Joker in the stomach. In another visit, Lee meets with Arthur at Arkham. He questions her about the lies, and she counters by trying to turn Marianne's accusations back on her, implying that Marianne is the one trying to manipulate Arthur. After admitting to her deception, Lee explains that she only did it to get closer to him. In a surprising revelation, she tells Arthur that she is pregnant, and he is overjoyed. The following day of the trial features a testimony from Sophie Dumont, Arthur's former neighbor, with whom he was infatuated. She recounts her unsettling encounters with him and the harassment she faced from Arthur's followers and the media, all eager to ask about her connection to him. Sophie also shares memories of conversations with Arthur's mother, Penny, detailing Arthur's failed aspirations as a comedian. As she speaks, Arthur imagines himself singing The Joker, before violently attacking the jury and the judge in his fantasy, culminating in a dramatic act of self-destruction. In a bold move, Arthur interrupts Sophie's testimony, declaring that he will fire Marianne and represent himself, earning cheers from his supporters. Upon returning to Arkham, the inmates celebrate his decision by singing When the Saints Go Marching In, much to the irritation of the guards. Judge Rothwax begrudgingly permits Arthur to represent himself while wearing his Joker makeup and suit. The next witness is Gary Puddles, Arthur's former co-worker at HaHa's, ha who witnessed the horrific murder of Randall. Gary explains how the trauma of the incident has affected his work and sleep, emphasizing his shock that Arthur, the only person at work who ever showed him kindness, could commit such an atrocity. In response, Arthur delivers an impassioned rant, declaring that he refuses to let his tormentors keep him down and that he feels liberated as the Joker. Arthur returns to Arkham, where he faces a brutal beating from Jackie and two other guards after he insults them during a tirade. As they drag him back to his cell, a young inmate named Ricky Moline, one of Arthur's staunchest supporters, begins to sing in a show of solidarity. However, Jackie soon storms into their cell and strangles Ricky to death, and Arthur overhears the struggle. During the trial's closing statements, Arthur finally reveals his true feelings to the court. He confesses that he no longer wants to be the Joker. He's simply sad and weary of life. He also admits to smothering his mother to death. In response, Lee and several of his followers turn against him, leaving the courthouse in disgust. Later, Arthur leaves a final voice message for Lee, singing to her one last time. The verdict is announced, and Arthur is found guilty on all murder charges. He erupts into maniacal laughter provoking a family member of one of the victims to lunge at him, igniting chaos in the courtroom. Suddenly, a car bomb detonates, blowing a massive hole in the courthouse and severely burning half of Dent's face. In the ensuing panic, Arthur makes a run for it and is quickly grabbed by two of his Joker followers who attempt to whisk him away. He eventually jumps out of their car and escapes into the streets. Climbing the steps to his old apartment, he finds Lee there and attempts to rekindle their romance. However, she tells him it's over, revealing that she was only ever in love with the idea of the Joker. She sings to him one last time before walking away, leaving him alone to face arrest. Back in Arkham, Jackie informs Arthur that he has a visitor. As he follows Jackie, another inmate who idolizes Arthur's Joker persona approaches him with a joke. When he reaches the punchline, he echoes Arthur's words to Murray, saying, you get what you deserve before repeatedly stabbing Arthur in the gut. As he bleeds out, Arthur experiences one final musical vision with Lee. Meanwhile, the inmate carves a Glasgow grin into his own face. And that's the end of the story. I hope you liked it. Comment down below what movies do you like us to recap next. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.